Hi, I'm Rachel McLeod, and I am a licensed clinical social worker and emotional wellness coach and a success coach. And so um, I want to talk with you today because there is a pattern um, that many people do that really bothers them and takes away from them. And so um, that's what we're going to talk about today. And that pattern and habit is um, the, the habit of thinking through worst case scenarios and what if thinking. Um, some people experience this as just, you know, something that pops up once in a while. Some people experience this as a major challenge. Many hours of a day can go into this um, or enough time that it really bothers you. That's an extreme case where you're spending hours there. Um, but there, there are other times when you can spend your waking moments there and, you know, and then you're trying to figure out how the heck did I get here? Whoa, that was dark. Um, and you know, and then you got to get yourself back together and go through your day. Um, so it can really throw you off or, um, or you can just find yourself sitting down, minding your own business. And next thing you know, you're seeing scenes and flashes of worst case scenarios. And so um, that habit is, is very costly and um, is very distressing because your brain doesn't really know the difference between you actually experiencing those things or thinking about them vividly. So when you're, when you're thinking about those in as much detail as you get into in those daydreaming day nightmare states, um, you're, you're experiencing the chemicals as you would if you were in the moment. You're, you're experiencing the energy flow as you would in the moment. Um, and you're, you are piping up your survival system and, and you're, you're, you can notice that because you'll start noticing symptoms of flight, fright, freeze, or faint. Um, and if you don't really catch this, which it's, I'm not, I'm not advocating, um, catching it yet at this point, I, I have a different way of treating this that, um, resolves this at the root. Um, but, um, if you don't, it has, some people, you know, don't really know they're in it. Like for instance, when I was doing, I have to have this one tough and, um, I would just spend hours there and then it would spit me out at the end and I'd be like, Oh, how about that? Um, uh, where did the time go? Or if something didn't interrupt me or if whatever, that's where I would have been. I remember waking up from nightmares and having to replay the nightmares. That's a little bit different, but same thing, right? Um, it's kind of like a, an addiction. I'd have to replay it and try to find a different scenario, a different ending. Um, but it kind of talks to the addiction of, um, needing to think about the worst case or that that feeling of not being able to stop yourself from going in there and it feels very like you're losing control but there's a lot that goes into it because your whole system has to recover from that chemical wash that just was spread everywhere by your by your imagination um you have to spend time recovering from that because once you you know recover from the that wash you have to eliminate it. So your whole body's involved with these mental processes. Your liver has to do stuff. Your elimination system has to do stuff. You have to bring in new vitamins and minerals. Um, and it just, and you can really, this really helps you burn through your vitamins and minerals because you're using them all up on many little nightmares and traumas that your brain is doing. And so when we can stop this function and use it and get what you need from it, um, you you really save yourself time, <laughs> um, energy, uh, chemicals, nutrients, and processes that could be used for other things like health and reaching your goals. And so this is a really it's like this is like this is one of those places where you feel like there's like um, you've got a little bag. This is this is so like old school, right? Um, but you've got your little money bag and there's a hole in the pocket, right? We don't have that anymore. We have hackers, I guess. Anyway, we have digital money, but, um, but you know, it, that's a frustrating thing that we're doing with our energy is that we're putting it in this brain that's got a hole that's going to just drain stuff out because of this what if thinking and, and, um, and thinking through worst case scenarios. And, um, and then we can also really feel like we're just negative. Like, why do we think about all the worst case scenarios all the time? Like, I'm just so negative, you know? And, um, and so that's not good on the self-esteem and it's not accurate either. And I want to tell you why the brain is doing this and how to work with it to get it to stop. Um, okay. And 
so I'm, I'm seeing a, a comment. I will get to that. I'm, I'm warming up. And so I'll get to com comments and questions soon. Go ahead and, and leave any that you want to put in there. Um, and so let's see, where was I? I was at, um, yeah, so this so this process can have a lot of effects on how we see ourselves, um, and it can we can really start even doing things to avoid this. We can um, we can really try to avoid being alone. We can start using the and this is where the coping strategies come in, right? Um, we'll start distracting and avoiding. We'll try to keep our brain busy so it doesn't go off there. Um, we'll make sure we're not alone. We'll want other people to be with us all the time, right? If this thing grows, and that's the thing with anxiety, um, depression, and traumatic stress stuff is that it just grows, and it's really not. It's just unresolved issues. Any unresolved issues we have grows. That's the nature of things. Like, you know, there's that, um, that's that old wives saying, um, a stitch in time saves nine. Like if you take care of it now, you save yourself nine down the road. And, um, and that's really what this is. And with, with these kind of symptoms is that there's a root cause it's not getting attended to and it's growing and it's, you know, and it's like hair down your drain. Okay. I know you may not have the problem I have with hair down the drain, but you know, you get one there, no big deal. But then because there's one, it's easier for more to get stuck in there. And the next thing you know, there's nothing moving in your shower and you got to get down there and yank all that stuff out. That happens in your brain as well. So, um, and, uh, I like, I prefer to deal with what's going on in your brain than what's going on in a drain. But, um, either way, both have to be dealt with. So, um, but the deal is here is that what's what the what is happening with worst case scenarios is this this is what i believe happens this is what my framework is built upon is that your brain is responsible for creating a new way of being in the world for you and typically when you are working on when you when your brain is stuck going on to the negatives 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 about what if what if what if it's doing this because there is something that it needs to figure out so that it can create this new way of being in the world. Sometimes this will happen after a trauma and the brain is like, oh, holy cow, um, that thing like that could happen. I didn't even know. I didn't know that could happen. And now we need to figure out how we're going to be in the world because that old way is not going to work because um, that thing happened. And no. And that trauma could be anything. It could be something huge. It can be a major violation. It could be something very, very small. But the brain's job is always in response to that, to play through your scenarios, create new ones, and keep it moving. And once it's got, once it feels like, okay, all right, I could think I can, if, you know, I think I could figure out how we're, that's never going to happen again, or how to keep us safe, or maybe we are safe, even though, like, that, it's got to do that. Um, and that process has to happen. You want it to happen because that's how you get to create, get to level up. That's how you get to mature and get to grow and not just remain afraid of things from happening. And so that what if process is one of these processes that your brain does to create a new way of being for you in the world. And so when we talk about avoiding this process or, or distracting from it or yanking your brain out of that process, I think that we are actually making this, we're prolonging that process and we're creating a stumbling block for our brain to do what it needs to be doing. Now, I also know that brains can get stuck and they will repeat this over and over and over and over again. And that is what many people experience. Like, seriously, you're going to be thinking about that again? You know, like, get over it. Um, and brains do need to get over it, but they have a process for doing that. Um, and if it cannot complete that process, it cannot get over it. And so you, it would serve you best. And this is how I treat this and how I get people out of this is to find out where your brain is stuck in this process and help it right there. And typically it, there's a process in here, um, between the awareness, the conscious and the unconscious, where something is not able to move fully through the process. And so sometimes people know what the problem is and sometimes they don't know what the problem is. And with, regardless, we need to pull, we need to find what this is and pull it through the healing pathways. Get the brain to use it, to make it all the way through its healing process with that issue. And we need to, so, okay. You, you get where I'm coming from. Um, and so let me show you how I do this. I'm going to walk you through um, my seven-step process for this.
Um, the very first thing that we want to do is we want to be able to make sure that you have tools to work with your whole brain, specifically your survival system. And so you want to pick up interventions that help this out. And these inter the interventions I teach people to use and equip people to use are emotional freedom techniques, thought field therapy, EMDR, uh, and energy medicine. Okay. Um, most people will just pick one or two, not pick. I really match people with this based on how, um, how their inner world is set up, where, what le their level of sensitivity is, how their sensories work and their preferences. If I talk about one of these and they're like, mm, that doesn't even sound like a good idea. That's not the right match. Right. Or no way am I doing that. That's not the match that we're going to use. And so we, we really work through these to find that match and then get you we want to get you to a place where you're skilled enough that you can help your brain through these things in the moments. And when, in the moments that this stuff is happening, when you notice that you are having, um, when you're doing what if thinking, you're going to just start using these interventions and help your whole brain address the fact that, Hey, we're creating a very huge, what if worst case scenario, what do you think about that? And that's what really what you want to be doing. That's the first step. Um, once you are there, this used to be, um, this used to be, um, and it's still kind of, anyway, this, I used to deal with this, um, this scenario, um, later on in the, in treatment because it has to do with thoughts. And if you watch one of my last videos, those are the ones that I work with at the end, the last. Um, but sometimes I, when this is the thing that is eating up people's time and energy and they, one of their priorities to get back first, this is the project that we'll start with. We will start with what, with what if thinking and at worst case scenarios. And this is because to really stop this, you have to take the next steps under this. And a lot of times if we leave this at the end, we've already done those steps and this resolves quickly. Um, but I'm going to tell you as if we didn't do any other work and we're starting with this. Okay. Um, and so that's the very first thing. And the second thing we're going to do is we want to find it. We want to track this thing in the moments that it's showing up. Okay. So we, one, we want you to be able to work with it when it's showing up and, and really help your brain move through it and, and actually stop doing that in those moments. And what happens, how it stops is that the, what if thinking your sub this is serving many purposes for you your subconscious mind has stuff over there that needs to come out it's like i we're trying to move forward over there and as i'm trying to help you move forward i can't get there because of this thing right here and and so and it needs to bring it up to the part of the brain that can solve problems and can assess like what we're going to do with this it cannot do that back there and so it brings it up and sometimes these are stuck emotions. They're stuck emotions in our subconscious and on our back there in our um, survival limbic area, right? So, um, but that part of the brain is not a problem solver. So it has to move these things to the part of the brain that does. And these ones can't release anything. They can't fix anything. They can't release anything. Their, their job is to run the program. The part that does that is up in the front. And so we can really, get them to do that. Um, so if, if there's emotion in the back, like fear and terror, and especially like, let's say there was a trauma, this is, stay with me people. Cause this is, this is the wild, crazy world I live in. And when you do it often, you just kind of flow in the motion of it. And you don't think about how complex and all the parts that you're pulling together, but <laughs> stay with me. <laughs> so your subconscious mind is, will use what ifs and the negative what ifs to match up with the stuff it's got in the back. Because then it's like, it, it's like there's this channel that's created that it creates. And it's like, okay, this stuff on the back, we're, we've got you matched. Let's go. Like, and it's trying to throw all this junk out through that because you're paying attention to this what if stuff and it's making you feel the same way it, you feel in the subconscious, right? So it's kind of a little bit of a subconscious like way of communicating with you, these negative what ifs. And so, but we need all this emotion to come out, not, not they're coming up, but there's no guarantee that they're going to come out because that may be where your, your brain is stuck in its process. 
And so one of the things that we're going to do first is we are going to use the tapping to get that door open so that these emotions actually come up and come out. And we know they do that because we, you will notice your fear before, how intense it is and where it's coming from your body and your mind and all the things. You will notice how intense it is before you use the interventions and then you will notice how intense it is afterwards. And a lot of times you will be you will be paying attention to the same thing that was making you totally terrified and now it's not. And so we know that the all the stuck energy and emotion got past it and made it through. That is a major part of this goal. And so if your brain has lined you up with this what if scenarios and it and it's like all this emotion is flowing and you got terror and fear. This is actually good for your subconscious mind. It's like, yeah. And you might be up here like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. This is awful. Okay. I get that. But we need to get that door open and we need to help the subconscious mind do what it's trying to do in these what if scenarios. And we can do that by letting it do what it does and using an intervention at the same time. And so we're letting the subconscious mind flow by telling us all these horrible stories and scenarios that are what if. And this is stuff you got stuck back there anyway. It's not just inventing stuff. This is These are feelings and things back there that it's telling you the story so it can bring it out. The stories that the subconscious mind tells are not always accurate because it doesn't have to be. That part of the brain has no sense of accuracy. It just has this unlimited sense of possibilities and creativity and imagination. Okay? And so those that... We want it to be like that. That's its nature. And it can really kick our butts. So especially when it's 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 doing that and, and making us feel afraid and terrified and grief and sadness and horror and shock. Okay? But that's its way of moving the stuff around so that it can line up with what you actually want to be experiencing and creating. And so instead of stopping it, instead of, hey, yanking it out of there, stop doing that. You know, instead of instead of fighting with it, you can really just go with it. Give it some time. These interventions, like I'm doing emotional freedom techniques right now. I'm just flowing with that. Um, they only take a short amount of time, like five minutes. And you and that emotion that was being moved and thrown at these images and evoked within you are moving through the healing pathways. And they actually, while you're using this, your whole brain comes together with this, and it really starts to um, well, a lot of this stuff doesn't make any sense except for to the subconscious mind. But once you get your survival system on board, it starts making its sense of it. Once you run it through the thinking center and the understanding center, now all of a sudden all of this emotion makes sense because it ran through that part of the brain and got some of that on it. And now you're looking at this stuff and you're seeing exactly why your subconscious mind was doing that because these your whole brain working together and the tools help your brain translate these big emotions into stuff you can actually use and stuff that's important to you. And your brain, this part of the brain, will go through this mess of stuff and it will start picking up stuff that's important. In here, there are lost parts of you. There are parts that you couldn't hang out with that, that you had to leave behind in order to move forward. But you, you didn't want to leave behind and you shouldn't have left behind, but you had to because you didn't have the resources to bring them on and or the support to, or you learned that that part of you is bad. Um, that that all is right here in this goop. Um, your values are in there, stuff that, you know, was conflicted with who you are. There's a lot going on here. This part of the brain is perfectly designed to get in there and pull that stuff out for you and keep it. It's not just in your subconscious mind now. It's up here in the front and it will store it and it will wrap it up in here so that you can always access it now. It's part of the whole neural network. Once it's back there and if it's in the unstored part, unprocessed part, it hasn't gone through this process. It's not really connected to a whole lot and it's and, and it's not in this nice beautiful form that your mind could sort through but that part of your brain also is like what's this doing up in here we're not good enough get that out of here you know oh all this fear go ahead and go thanks for coming you know um, and and it's just like it just starts throwing the stuff out and done it's not something that needs to rehash over and over again but your 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 whole system knows this is in there and they have processes day and night, night and day to try to get this stuff out. 
And if you don't help them, they do this over and over and over and over. And they plot and plan against you to try to figure out how to get this stuff out of here. There's this stuff in our subconscious. We can't have it here, but we can't get it out. And she won't listen to us. So come on, let's try again. Try. And your whole life is about this. And this process is taking up your whole life. And this is why you're choosing people that make you feel afraid. This is why you're, you're, you're limiting yourself. This is why you're staying stuck. This is why you're recreating scenarios where you feel disappointed. This is where you create these, you're experiencing and paying attention to these scenarios where you're not good enough. And that's because it's in your subconscious. It has to come out. And if you don't know how to intentionally do that, you have to wait for accidents, spontaneous healing to happen, which is awesome. Those things do. But when you've got a habit like this that's draining you and more, you can really be intentional and really do this because it does not take a long time. And as a matter of fact, you know that you've got it, that you've resolved this issue in the moment. When it's happening, you're using your interventions and all of a sudden your brain changes its mind and says it wants to go focus on something else. Next thing you know, you're like, I'm planning my shopping list. Yes, like that means your brain got what it needed right now and it's moving on. Because when it your brain when your thinking center is locked onto something, it is takes like pliers to get it to let go. And that's why your survival system has such a big response because it's like you're like you're taking us through this place. Everybody's upset. There's all these chemicals. We need to be in survival mode and it will do the survival stuff. And that makes that part of the brain let it go. But it, you have to put a lot of effort to stop this part from thinking about what it wants to think about. But while you're using these interventions, all of a sudden your brain will just let it go and move on. And so that's a sign that your brain got what it needed right then. And it's probably back there in its corner, like, ooh, look at this new thing I got. I'm playing around with this. And it's doing this for a while. And then pretty soon it'll say, you know what, I need something else. And then it'll go and grab on something else. Right? <laughs> That's how it works. And so you can support it to get what it wants because sometimes it's in parts of the brain it can't pull it out of. And these interventions help the whole brain work together, especially your survival system, to let this part of the brain have what it wants. And then it will let go of, it will let go of the attention because that's really how it functions is by putting your attention to things. And, um, and it will put your attention where there needs work. And so it is very problem-centered, <laughs> likes to be on, that's its job. And so um, when you can keep up with this and learn about this, you can really support it and be like, oh, there it goes again. Okay, let me help you. And so you use an intervention and you keep moving when it lets you. Or if you're like, hey, okay, you know what? We have a meeting in like two minutes. So I'm gonna help you for a little bit. And you can sit with that for a little while and work that apart. And then we're going to go do this and we'll come back. Okay. A lot of times, once you've got that going on, brains are really great with you because they're like, okay, all right. Okay. She's listening. <laughs> and they'll give you a break. Uh, and cause there's, there's more teamwork. You help me, I help you. But if they don't think you're ever going to help them, forget it. So, um, that's really one of the first parts of this. Um, and that's, that's step one. And, but we, we are going to do that step over and over and over again. So that's really just the most important step. Now we want to, if you can deal with it in the moment and you're, you you can, you're noticing, okay, I'm, I'm what ifing right here, you know, what if the car crashes and this happens and you know, blah, what if, you know, my spouse cheats on me and leaves me like, right. I mean, we're talking when this thing is ugly. What if I make the wrong decision in my business and, you know, you know, right. Play that one out. Don't play it out, but <laughs> use your interventions if you need to. Um, so, you know, that, that's really, that's really what's going on. We want you to be able to take your, your, your mental space back in the moments. Cause once you can do that, then we can use this, we can use this in other places. Okay. Getting, getting people up to this place, um, usually takes, we usually get here in about a session and, um, and then the work to maintain it. I have, I, I give people specific exercises so that they know how to track this, know what they're looking for. Don't get lost in the weeds. And they're being very specific and targeted. When you go into your inner world, it's, it's, it's easy to get caught up in so many different things um, and to lose track. And you're, you're in there using your interventions, you're in there and you're doing a lot of great work, but you're not getting the outcomes that you're looking for. You're not getting um, 
more freedom, more energy to your um, your goals. You're getting broad overall work. I think that's fine. That's not how I do things, uh, especially because I work with people who um, have a long held dream that they're trying to get after because their their symptoms are in their way or they, they have this ambition. They want to be this mom. They want to be the woman that ends generational trauma and really changes the family legacy. I That's typically what I and so when we do work, we do the work that helps them to reach their goal because we can help them to um, take something that's standing in the way of their goal um, or their long held dream. And we do, we have to do all the root work to get there. And so we're still doing all the work, but we get the result of getting them out of this or, you know, resolving this one issue that was causing them daily problems. And so. Um, that's how I like to do things, especially because I like to know it's working. I like to, I, I'm, I'm all about hitting things and quitting things. I don't like to waltz around and know that we're doing good work, but we can't see the outcome. That's not my style. Um, when I first began, that was all of the skill I had. And so I don't think that's a terrible skill <laughs> because it's not, but it took me about three years to do the work I can do now in about two to six months. Um, all because it was just a skill level skill set. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, as you keep, as you try this stuff out, you're going to, you're going to see how you like to do things. Okay. So now step one, you have skills. Um, two, you're dealing with them in the moments where they occur. And then step three, we want to find the triggers. What is sending you off on this? Is it something about is it is it something about work? Is it something about um, an interaction with your kids? Is it something about like what is it? And we can use um, we can look in the moments every day in your everyday life where this is happening to find triggers. Um, and when we find those triggers, we can really work on that. Um, but what I like to do is really step three. Uh, is to take that trigger and find the root. And we can do that. There's lots of strategies to do that, but you really have to grab something from the present dysfunction and, and say, hey, brain, what do you know about this? And your brain will say, you're so, and you can ask specific questions that your brain will do this uh, and your body will tell you to. Um, and you, you say, what do you know about this? I'm saying that in our language, <laughs> but um, what do you know? And your subconscious mind will say like, well, let me tell you some stories. And so all the subconscious material associated with this will come on out. Um, the same thing, your survival system will use its language to tell you what's happening, what it thinks about it. Um, and then <laughs> your body will tell you where, where it feels this, where it's, where that is. And so all this information, we're using interventions the whole time. So we're pulling this through all parts of your brain. We're getting your whole brain to work on it together and take us to the root. Cause we'll keep asking questions and we'll keep asking questions and we'll keep asking questions until all of a sudden we get to the root of it and it will just open up and you will see like exactly why this is there and it will make perfect sense to you. Well, yeah, that makes total sense. I would do this too if I were you. And and that and when we're there, we sit and and we can we're still using an intervention while we're looking at this. And so the whole brain is sitting at this table looking at this thing with you. And you're like, hmm, yeah, I know. And everyone's like, yeah, I know. It this is awful. And so all the emotion is moving because we're using the interventions. And then more the longer that you can look at this little thing here. Um, and you're moving the emotion, next thing you know, it's starting to make its way into your thinking center and you're starting to have new thoughts about this. And, and then, you know, your subconscious is replaying all these situations where this messed you up. And so the whole team is like, this isn't good. I know we were doing this. And then the next thing you know, then they're in there like, what are we going to do? This thing is sucking the life out of us. And yeah, we got to figure it out, you know, cause it's, it's important. And then the next thing you know, they're sending ideas. And they're sending uh, a new a new way of being, new opportunities, new things that as you're looking at it, you're it didn't make sense before, um, but because you didn't know that this was the issue, but now your brain is like, oh, I got something right here for that. What do you think? 
and then the thinking center is thinking about it and your subconscious is adding to it and your thinking center is thinking about it and you're feeling about it. Your body's feeling about all these little ideas and everyone's saying, ah, that almost works, but it won't work for this because then it will cause a problem over there. And they say, okay, let's come back and let's do this again. What do we think? And they'll say, well, since it was almost a solution, what if we um, do this, this and that? And then everyone looks about that, your body feels into that, and your thoughts think about that. And, and everyone says, I think this actually might be good. And so once everyone's in agreement and in alignment with that issue, your thinking center's job is then to make a program and throw it back to the survival system and your subconscious mind, and you will have created a program for a new way of being in the world. And um, we just went through like three steps right there. So we want to find the root. <laughs> Step four. Step five, we want to help the brain examine the situation. We want to hold the attention on the issue and use an intervention long enough for the brain to be able to do what brains do well. Um, and then we want to support the brain to make a new way of being for you in the world, to make a new program. And then the last thing is, is that we want to support it to make that program subconscious, to run without you having to think about it. And that is just by watching it, keep watching your life. And if you see the old thinking pattern come up, be like, oh yeah, look at you. You can use an intervention. Sell to have your whole brain say, hey, look, look what we're still doing over here. What do you think? And your brain is like, we're still doing that? <laughs> anyway, and then they're like, yeah, we're still doing that. What are you gonna do? And so everyone comes back to the table and this, this process that we're talking about, we're playing with an electrical instrument here. And so this process happens at the speed of electricity. And so it's really, you can really work through some of these things in under a minute. And, and so you can keep living your life and, keep, and just take care of your brain. And so, and pretty soon after you catch two or three of those, your brain kicks up on it and it's like, I'm watching it for you. You go ahead and, and work on that dream we're working on. I'm going to watch these guys over here and figure out how to like make that program go. Because your brain is supposed to be doing this outside of your awareness anyway. The only reason why we're doing this is because it didn't and it couldn't. And so now we got to walk it through its own process for healing. And so those are the seven steps. And once you resolve the root issue of this, the whole thing starts to change because all the roots of everything are connected. And so it actually starts to unravel. It resolves this what if situation because now the brain is like, oh, I know what we'll do. And so you don't have, so you now you, you can sleep and not be what ifing in your dreams. You can, you'll be out here in the present world, not what ifing. Um, you will just be thinking. And if you find that you're doing this what if thing again, you can say, what's up with that brain? What do you need some help with? And you can help your brain. You can follow the steps again to help your brain because this is not a process that ends. This is one of the processes brains use to create an upgrade and to create a new way of being for you in the world. You will always need a new way of being in the world. You know this if you have small, if you have children and you had babies, there was a way of being in the world then. But if you keep that same way of being in the world and they're 18, you got problems, right? If you had a traumatic childhood and there was a way of being that kept you safe and you're still doing that at 40, you got problems. And your, your brain is like, I know you want to do this 40 year old thing, but I only got like 15 year old stuff going on here. I'd love to help you. And it's kicking my butt to not, but I can't get there with you. And so we always are upgrading. We're always outgrowing our programming and our way of being in the world. And so we really can help our brain through this. And so then if you find yourself, your brain, what ifing, you just help it out. You're like, okay, upgrade time. Let's do this. Tell me what's going on. Why are we playing out this horrible scenario? And now you're here with your brain creating a new way of being in the world. And so um, and you get to participate in that. And so with this what ifing situation out of the way, um, what you do, so that's unraveled and it will start to unravel other things as well. And so you can, you don't have that, the brains do that. They're supposed to be doing that by themselves. You don't have to be monitoring it. Like, are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? You'll know because of how easy your, your life is and how slow it is. If you've got areas that are like, there's, your brain's having a, a you, you're experiencing a glitch in your program. <laughs> and so when you find those places, that's really where you want to, you want to say, 
brain, excuse me, what's going on here? <laughs> and let's, let's, can we smooth that out? You know, and that begins the process and you're using your interventions. Um, and so with this one thing unraveled, right? Now we just unraveled and took apart um, and broke you out of this habit of we're thinking through worst case scenarios and what if. And so now we want to, we want to reassess your, your situation, your life, your stressors. And that doesn't have to take a long time, right? We just let it be, look around. Um, and many things will have changed. You will feel differently about many things because once you, once you upgrade a program, it goes throughout your whole system. Anywhere that old program was running and showing up, you're going to notice changes in that part of your life. And so now we're going to look at it now and say, where, do, where are we going to go now? And we're going to find the next one that's going to get you the most healing and the, the most clarity and the most release from this, whatever you got going on, anxiety, depression, traumatic stress, or just, you know, something that's blocking you from getting to your long held dream. Right. So we're going to grab that and we start a new project. We're going to start this all over again because we're going to bring every piece of your life into alignment with who you are now. We're going to update it. We're going to make sure everything's ironed out. We're going to make sure things are running. We're going to make sure you're not falling into pitfalls of despair or falling into pitfalls of, of um, self-hatred or falling into pitfalls of just like, I can't, I, I worked with a client today and we pulled out two thoughts that were just dead end thoughts. Like they just brains, no brain can work with that. Um, and so we, that was what was stopping him from being able to be creative um, with his solutions. And so those are things that we that we're looking for, and we want to bring all of that in because your brain is supposed to be helping you live amazingly. And anywhere that is not amazing in your life, your brain is is partly responsible for that. And so we can really figure out what's going on there and get that part of your life moving and coming into alignment with the life of your dreams, the life you've been imagining. There's no reason to be sitting around suffering with this stuff or suffering from a low a subpar life because you're you you don't know how to get your brain to create the life that you really really want so and let me say also there are two ways to work with me if you are interested i have um an eight week program that is that is really does it's an end-to-end -end system for eliminating symptoms um releasing and clearing unconscious blocks and aligning your life with the life of your dreams and so that is an intensive um, and then I and that's eight weeks and I also have the opportunity to work with me over a 30-day period and this is for people that um, really uh, need to build in a lot more um, stability and security in their life and so they need the tools to do that but they're not quite ready to go do the overhaul yet and so this is at that opportunity there and it's a little bit less intensive, but it's, it's all the foundational stuff and we clear out tons of stuff during that time and build your framework and get you ready to go to do any and all the work your brain needs you to do. So it's really powerful time, great symptom elimination stuff, and also the beginning frames of bringing your whole life into alignment. So those, that is what, those are ways to work with me anyway. If you, I put, um, I put in the, the header here under the title of this thing, um, testimonials, links to testimonials, what other people have said using this process, and, um, and then a link to read about working with me and what that looks like. So, okay, now I want to read questions. If anybody has any questions about anything I've said, uh, please let me know and drop them there. If you're watching the replay, you can still leave messages and I will get to them. So, okay, Marie, <laughs> I'm going to read this. Um, uh, Marie says, I did an exercise that you close your eyes and visit your inner child. And I'm having a hard time recovering from that. Feels like this is what you're explaining. I'm exhausted. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, this is this exercise is falls under the category of resourcing and this is a powerful exercise that must be used at the right time in someone's healing um and let me tell you um on behalf of all therapists including myself i just flubbed this one up recently but i flubbed it up a lot worse in the in the past um but where you you try something with a client that they're not ready for, that their brain doesn't have the infrastructure to do 
and you will create more problems. Um, I tried this the other day. I, I just, I, I felt it out and myself was saying, oh, she maybe will maybe be able to make this leap. She may not. I'm gonna go for it and see what happens. Because with the right client, you can take these kinds of risks. Nothing bad is gonna happen. They're just gonna be like, um, well, no, not really. That doesn't really resonate. <laughs> And then you're both kind of like, okay, Rachel. Anyway, <laughs> didn't fly here. Okay, so, um, but there's, a, and so as you're, but if you try to have somebody do an exercise that they do not have the infrastructure for, it can really create a lot of problems. And Maria, that sounds like what happened with you. Many um, therapists are, do not, you have to build a skill set for this. You have to, um, there's trial and error that happens. There's learning about this. There's, um, gosh, I've made so many mistakes along my path. Um, I, I once did something like this that totally um, sent my client, um, this was back in my therapy days, but like totally destabilized them. They had to go into inpatient rehab. They were just not okay. And we spent, we worked our tails off, that person and I, to get them stabilized. We had to get off the healing path and just be on the stabilization path. And, and because they just, it was just too much. And so you really can hurt yourself with these things. Um, it is, and, and, and there's, and you, you're matching here the desire to heal with not pushing things too far. You can't give somebody a dose of medicine that is too much for them. Like that is not good. That leads, and, and, and as we build, as we're building in skills, we learn how to do that and we respect it a lot more. Um, and it can really like even go the other way where um, people have bad, therapists have bad experiences and they, they're traumatized. Like, you know, like let's say with my client, you know, they went to, um, uh, they had to go to um, inpatient and I could have been like, this is bad. This is terrible. Oh my gosh. Like it was, it was not cool. And I, I was like, and I knew who was responsible for that. Right. All the fingers. And, um, but it was just like, I did this. I need to undo this. And so we were in there and the, the only thing that can really resolve that is your brain. And so we've got to help your brain catch up and do the work that was done and that it needed to do to be able to do to take the step that you took with your inner child. So um, so that is something that you just, I don't even know how to explain that. And I don't know, um, I, 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 I don't know if anybody, if as even as a therapist, if somebody would have told me if I would have even understood, like, okay, let me tell you this. When we do trainings like EMDR, let's take EMDR right now, because that's the most popular one. Um, by the time we're done with the two weekend journey, which is like 20 some hours, um, we don't, we, we, I remember them teaching me during those two train, those two weekend trainings, intensives, they were, they talked about this, but I didn't get it. I didn't have enough experience for my brain to understand it. Right. So it wasn't till later that I saw the value of it. And the value of an exercise like that is, especially if you're in a, if you're in a memory and you first, you want to like, let's say you're in a memory where you're four, right? And it was traumatic and you have worked your way. You've desensitized your way all the way in and you have desensitized this. You have done your best to desensitize this. If it was a hot one, you've desensitized it once or twice or three times, right? You've combed through and you've desensitized, um, especially with a sensitive client. Um, from here, now, if, if they're in a place where they cannot solve this problem, this means that they do not have the infrastructure built for that kind of thing, okay? And so even if you do a resourcing exercise with, and you, you bring yourself in and you, you sit with that younger part of you, a lot of times people who don't have the infrastructure for that will just be like, I don't know how to help them. You know, I don't know how to comfort them. Um, this sign signals that you, you need to add more information, which this is when you want to work with the, you, you're noting, okay, there's some um, conscious stuff that needs to have, take place. There's some holes in understanding, right? Um, so, but 
if you haven't desensitized this sufficiently and you go in there, both you and your inner child are reliving this thing. And that is bad and nobody can help anybody. And that's, and you're getting re-traumatized. And then you come out and your system is still dealing with the trauma of, oh my gosh, that happened again. And your brain doesn't know time, doesn't know that you were not there. It's just like that happened again. And now you're dealing with that. And so now you're in a state of, you're in a limb. Well, I don't know exactly what you're experiencing, but you're, I would imagine you're in a limbic state. And the only thing for limbic states is, is soothing comfort. And you need to do that through your body. And so there are lots of mind body interventions that can help you calm down your survival system. Um, and, you know, and when I, when this client that I had, we just applied, applied interventions, applied interventions, applied interventions. And, um, and then, and every once in a while there would be an opening where we could, uh, we could desensitize the thing that we were working on. And we would, we'd take that time, but we'd get out quickly and get back to calming this, this, the survival system. Because if the survival system's not happy, ain't nobody happy. And so it's, it's really, uh, so it's better not to ever do that than to do it. But if you do do it, um, and this is why I, 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 when I'm teaching people to do this, I teach this um, after they have done about 28 hours of specific and targeted brain work, which is about six months of, of weekly sessions with a therapist, right? We have cleared up stuff. And so then we're going to try this and we're still going to be really careful. So, but buckle up, use your tools. And that is the other reason why I wait because I want to make sure my people are locked and loaded. Like they got all their tools on. And if something like this happens, they know exactly what to do and they can get into mode and take care of themselves. Now, because I have had the experience I have, that really doesn't happen frequently with me anymore because I am more like, let's just wait and try all these other exercises. <laughs> and really the only people that break through those are the ones that intuitively know I'm going in. And then I'm like, ah, okay, buckle up, let's go, you know, and let's go. And so then I will go with them because I know that they know that that's the right thing for them to be doing. So, um, okay, so I'm going to keep reading your stuff. So um, if you're exhausted, you are running in a survival state and that state is exhausting and expensive and taxing on your whole system. The sooner you can get out, the better. Um, so you're going to want to try some interventions that are very gentle, but are very powerful and effective. Like emotional freedom techniques is a great one. Energy medicine is a great one. Um, uh, because it's just so gentle and you can really get a lot of work done without, um, let me see, without, I, I, I had like four ideas come in my brain at the same time. Um, you can. I don't, I'm abandoning that thought. I like this other thought that's coming up. <laughs> so, um, and that is that, um, you know, I, I just want to share a couple of interventions, energy medicine ones, because they're easy to do and they're very gentle with your system. And um, one of the first things you can do is put your fingers like this and cover, these are neurovascular points on the forehead that are very calming to your system. And see, I already did my deep breath. <laughs> which is what I do usually when my system starts calming. Um, this helps with the fight, flight, freeze, or faint response. And it's just very gentle. Um, I have some clients where I will have this do them, them do this a lot throughout the day because it helps to calm the survival system. And we want that survival system working as smart as possible. And if it's all stressed out and wacky and nerving, it's not going to be very smart. And so it's not going to be very helpful to you or even willing to participate. And we want it to participate. You can hold this for a couple of seconds, minutes, 30 seconds to two minutes. It, everybody has their own pace here. And try to set your own, you know, risk. Take full responsibility for yourself. Um, let's see. Also, there's, you can, you can, there's a, your meridian, your triple warmer meridian um, starts here. And it travels up your arm, around the back, around your ear, up to around here. Okay. And, um, and we can, and it can get like supercharged because it will start sucking all of the energy from all the other meridians, especially, anyway. I'm not going to go into tons of detail, but if you want to help it, like let go of some of that energy and calm down, buddy, um, you can start tracing it backwards. But, um, I will tell you that this is not the right one for everybody. 
and sometimes they will need to trace it forwards. And then you can trace it down here off your ring finger, off your ring finger. Or you can come to one side and trace it backwards. Off your ring finger, come to the other side, trace it down the ring finger. Those are just some exercises, but these ones find that they really help. I did this with a client, and she's like, ooh, because I don't know how their assistant's going to react. But she was like, it's like when you shave your legs and you put your pants on your legs. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. She's like, yeah, it's a good feeling. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Anyway, um, so that let me know this one was a good one for her and she liked it. She was drawn to it. We, we're drawn to the things that will help our survival systems. That's why some people have to eat a lot of ice cream because it actually helps your survival system. And so the next thing you know, you're like making a beeline to the ice cream and you're like, no, no, no. But your survival system is yes, shush, we're doing this because I need to chill out. And next thing you know, you're eating the ice cream and your subconscious mind, you know, is under the. Um, orders of your survival system. And so the survival system's like, trick her, please. Sabotage her. Remind her of how good it would be. So it's doing its thing. <laughs> so everybody, you've lost your team. Once you go into survival mode, your team is not your team. They are the, under the, the authority of your survival system and they will make you do things that you don't like doing. So um, you, it really it pays off to take care of your survival system. If you do this and you don't feel good, try it the other way and roll up. This is strengthening it. Few people will need this. I don't like this already, I can tell. Um, but I'll go back the other way. But just play with it, see what you need. Sometimes you want to flush it. You want to say, um, you want to take out the energy in there, like calm down, calm down, buddy. It's a masculine energy. If you follow Chinese medicine, it's yang energy. Anyway, details. And then you can come back up and bring in fresh energy, not the, with the intention to bring fresh energy and not that spaz stuff that had your triple warmer trip, tripping out. Um, so those are a couple of exercises you might try. I'm thinking of another one. Another one is you can pull your hand under your arm here and one on your elbow and just hold those for a couple of minutes. And this helps rebalance it's a, it's a nice one for calming and soothing. So, um, so there's lots of different things like that that you can do. Um, and, and by all means, if all else fails, you can put your hand here. Our hands are electromagnetic and like we're, our whole being is like a big battery. Um, so one side is positively charged, one is negative. So one will push energy in, one will push it out. Um, but if you hold here, it really helps bring the energy flow plus chemical flow into this front part of your brain, which is opposite of what happens under trauma stuff and, and distress. And um, because when you're, when you're in survival mode, that part of the brain starts shutting down the front part. And so it takes starts taking out the chemicals and the electrical activity. And so having this can really kind of um, interrupt and interact with that pattern. And since we're working with the brain, um, it that it responds to that by calming down. I don't know much more about that, but I think it's cool. My clients like it or the right clients like this. And um, so it's just something you can try as well. So anywho. All right. Um, let's see. Um, okay. So the car, the husband cheating, the business decisions example you just used is all me right now. I'm so sorry. Um, that That is not cool when your brain is playing out those scenarios because it doesn't know what's true or false, right? So now you're kind of mad at your husband because you just saw him cheat, you know? And now there's this in there. He's like, can I have my wife? Yes, you can have your wife and all of my fantasies, uh, all my nightmares as well. How about that? Is that fun, right? No, it's not fun. It's not fun for everybody. And so, so much better to get the actual meaning and get the actual need that your brain has met than to let it keep doing that because it will not stop, as you know. Um, okay, and um, uh, Marie says that I dissociated and st I dissociate and stay busy constantly. And when I try to be to ground and be in the moment, I instantly get tired. Yes, um, so tired I start closing and nodding out. Happens all the time with family gatherings. I don't know how I became so unbalanced. I don't remember always being like this. Yeah, you know, um, so. Absolutely. And the fact that you're dissociating says to me that there's pain in your system and your brain feels like it would be safer for you just to go over there for a little while. We'll take it over here on autopilot. Thank you. We'll call you back when the pain is gone. 
Um, so I do have, there are lots of interventions that can help with dissociating and, and bringing you back. Um, but I find that you just have to keep using those if you don't get to the root because the problem really is the pain in there. And, um, and once that, and when you can resolve that pain, then the need to dissociate goes away um, and you don't dissociate as often. And so also staying busy keeps your mind, this part, you know, unlocked from being able to focus on things that would send you into dissociation, racing heart, you know, distress. And so it's a survival strategy to keep stay distressed, to stay moving like that, but it is taxing and it's exhausting to your system. So, um, so that is just tough. So, um, uh, she says, I, yes, I didn't know what to tell her. And all I did was cry. Okay. Let me tell you the best thing you did in that scenario was cry because your body went into its own natural healing process. And as long as you cry well and properly, you're good. If you're crying while telling yourself, stop and don't, and you're stupid for this only babies cry, blah, blah. You're not getting a good cry on and you're not getting to do the brain's actual healing function that will serve to knock you out of this distress because the crying is desensitizing. It's a body intervention that moves emotion. And you've got to move the emotion in order for the whole thing, because the emotion is what sounds the alarm of the pain. Um, it's one of the one of the pain signals that happen in the body, right? The body, anyway. Um, so, but you've really got to to do that. And so crying is, is the exact right thing to do. You apply an intervention, crying, and, um, and so that can really help. But if it's not, you got to get all of the symptoms, all of that distress through the healing pathways. And so it's like kind of piecing it through and grabbing it through, you know, those, that sort of thing. So yes, lesson learned. Absolutely. And, you know, um, your brain has the potential now to be like, holy crap. Um, when you do that, they can start making the association between doing this work and excruciating pain. And so it's really important that you make it through this so that it doesn't form that hard enough so that it will really block you from doing further work to heal. And you, that was a great intervention, wrong timing, um, and sorry. And, um, and so let me see. Um, all the ideas coming in again. Okay. Yes. So really, um, do what you need to do to get through this so that your brain doesn't have one more nugget to form a bunch of stuff around and create more dysfunction in your life over. And so I'm glad you asked that question and are talking about it. Um, talking doesn't necessarily do what we need it to do, like moving emotions wise, because it's not the part of the brain that gets to do the moving emotion. And that's why talk therapy really um, fails to resolve these issues at the root because it doesn't affect the parts of the brain where the energy is coming, the emotion is stuck. And so, but it can really help us like to really kind of anchor where we need to be and really give us some grounding so that we can do the work we need to do. So, all right, I'm going to jump off. Wonderful connecting with you all and I will see you soon. Take care.